Okay, Monday, December 4th, 2023. Uh, Lviv, Ukraine. <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely cold. Uh, we, we definitely, it's uh, definitely going to be a white Christmas this year. Uh, that is for sure. So, yeah, I've been busy. Uh, but I got back from Virginia Beach and then things got really busy with the job and I'm working on a couple side projects. You know, uh, one of them is a game, a quiz game. It's coming along really good. We're using a uh, no-code platform called Bubble.io. And it really, you really reap the benefits of AI uh, with this one. I mean, stuff that used to take what, two months to code is being done in like two weeks. And stuff that required a very uh, senior developer now is being done by uh, university students. I believe that uh, they're also using Microsoft Copilot. And, you know, when I took the Python course, uh, I was using ChatGPT. And I would just throw in the homework problem. And I would uh, throw in what the example output should look like. And also maybe even the starting input. Like, so the data in, what problem I wanted to solve, and then what the output should look like. It, it did it. It took two or three tries. I'd say, no, I meant this, I meant that, and uh, <laughs> it, uh, it worked. You know, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it worked. And I think, uh, I think that's what this uh, bubble.io is. It's just a uh, packaged version of what I was doing manually. And you can just use natural language to uh, build your program. So you really just have to know what you want and know what, uh, uh, how to test uh, that you got what you want. So anyway, yeah, that's, uh, that's really uh, that's a brave new world we're going to be getting into here. You know, it's uh, people with the imagination and the ideas now are going to be valuable. You know, we're stepping up the food chain here. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, so yeah, this, this game, I'll talk more about it as we get closer to a public release. It's already working. I mean, it's already working in the sandbox. Uh, it's working pretty good. We just have to, uh, get the legal things sorted out, the GDPR and, uh, that, that sort of stuff worked out. So, um, it's legal. It's legal and compliant, but the core mechanics... The core mechanics are good. We just got to get the legal mechanics uh, down so that we can uh, put it out there to the public. And what else is going on? Um, yeah, Bitcoin broke 40,000. So everybody is waiting for uh, the BlackRock ETF. And as my understanding, uh, January 10th is the deadline. And my feeling is it'll shoot up. But, you know, it's... Uh, People are going to come to the re realization it's it's uh, you know it's it's a it's not a technology per se like um, they they make it out to be it was really overhyped I mean yeah it's uh, you know it's uh, it's a ledger you know like a blockchain is a ledger technology so it tracks ownership and that's important but I think that's uh, I, I don't think that's going to top uh, AI or top military and defense or top uh you know jet aircraft or anything like that you know and so I, the money will go in there you know the there'll be a honeymoon period and then i think it'll wear off and it'll be just another thing you can invest into you know it, as an inflation hedge so people buy copper gold silver you know they buy uh basic material companies supermarket stocks whatever to counter inflation oil it'll be just one another one of those things you know, to, you know, it'll benefit from low interest rates and it'll pull back on higher if rates are going up. It'll just be a, another thing, another thing you can put your money into. I'm still, and this is not investment advice, I'm still in now in these big seven or magnificent seven stocks, you know, because that's where the breakthroughs are coming. They're coming in AI, search, you know, office automation, you know, this sort of thing. I'm not so much of a believer in, you know, the the metaverse or virtual reality and all that. I think people like to be outside like me. Any chance I get, I get outside. And I think when people win the lottery and stuff, they like to, 
they, they drop their jobs and leave the office and live an outdoor life, you know, uh, you know, live on a boat or something or live on a tropical place where they can go walk. That's the human, that's what we are as humans. We still, we still like to be in the natural world if possible. I, I mean, a lot of us are tied to computers and, and phones and stuff just out of necessity. Now, what do I want to talk about? Yeah, we, five minutes in, so. Yeah, the other thing I want to talk about is like what happens when, uh, yeah, the politics in the U.S. is really starting to shape up. Trump has pulled ahead. You know, the, you know, the Republicans are, you know, trying to find an alternative, I guess, but they're really trying to find a vice president, you know. Um, and it's, it's heating up over there and the Democrats are, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for them and I, uh, out of necessity because I live in Ukraine. That's the way I'm voting, but it's, uh, <laughs> I, I can't say it's a, it's a happy choice. I mean, I'm happy. What, what did I like that Biden did? Uh, he did the CHIPS Act, you know, to, that, that's pretty significant to bring all the semiconductor technology back to the U.S. I, I don't know why that's, uh, that should be publicized more. That's very significant to start uh, bringing that tech back here to America. And um, yeah, that, and then actually more oil has been pumped this last year than ever in the history of the US, you know, American oil. So uh, quietly, I mean, they're, they're doing stuff that Trump would have been doing. They're just more quiet about it, I guess. But uh, still, you know, this is just a, the flavor, right? The the Democrat flavor, it's like very anti-American and people don't like that. I don't like it, but you know, I'm living here in Ukraine and out of necessity, I want to, I, I don't want this place to turn into a, into a anarchy. Uh, you know, I was here around 20 years ago, 25 years ago when it was an anarchy, it wasn't cool. You know, it was a, Cops were shaking people down in the street, taking... They knew you had a $300 a day limit on the ATM. So the cops uh, were shaking down some people. I never had a problem with the cops. I used to carry some business cards from the U.S. Embassy. You know, I knew a few of the diplomats, and I used to just flash their business cards, and that would do the trick. You know, um, you know I used to always just say, call George Bush, and people used to back off. Um, so... Uh, yeah, but there were Americans, the cops would take them to the bankomat, uh, make them take out 300 bucks a day, you know, and the taxi drivers were, uh, you know, taking people into the woods, beating them up, all this kind of crazy stuff used to happen here. And if uh, Trump gets elected and throws Ukraine under the bus, I don't think the Russians will take all of Ukraine. They don't want to deal with partisan warfare. And they uh, definitely, you know, when they took Georgia, they only took the parts they thought were historically Russian or ethnically Russian. They didn't take all of Georgia. So I, I think the territories that they've taken now, they will take. And maybe they'll leave the rest of Ukraine alone. But what will happen is if uh, the funding dries up, you know, with Trump's election, a lot of uh, it'll empower and change the tone in Europe. And people like, there'll be more Geert Wieders and Wilder, well, more people like Orban, you know, more of these, uh, I mean, Germany already has like a extreme right. These guys will rise up or feel empowered. And then um, European governments will have to compromise with their right wings and the funding will get cut uh, to Ukraine. And so what happens when you have a whole bunch of army men you know, with guns, a lot of guns have been handed out here without any tracking. I mean, you got uh, a lot of weapons here that have been, uh, you know, that are just floating around unaccounted for, you know, and if these guys haven't been paid, you know, guess what happens here? You know, it's, uh, it's like Moscow and the, after the Soviet Union fell or Kiev after the Soviet Union fell. It's, uh, it's going to be crazy time, you know, I mean, uh, so it'll be a lot of uh, bandits and gangsters and all this thing and who knows maybe we'll have to pay our pay a protection pay for a roof as we call it in the in the old days in ukraine they used to call it paying for a roof that you know some some group of guys would uh you know you know charge you some protection money 
and then your car won't catch on fire and your apartment will be okay and your business won't burn down that's uh that sort of thing i it could uh it could backslide that way you know if uh that, that's uh that's what we fear here you know if uh, ukraine gets thrown under the bus you know that uh it could be bad it could be really uh you know these uh you know the, these army commanders even uh, some of them under even in the best of circumstances now with the western training and all of the support they're still pretty corrupt and uh imagine them having uh no accountability uh how, how it will be so yeah we can only hope you know um this is uh this is explaining why like why why i I think things in America can wait. America's doing pretty good when I was there. I mean, there's a lot of this in America where 99% uh, of the uh, media attention is focused on 1% of the events. And so you, it makes it sound like it's a hellhole there, but most people I've seen there are living the same lives they were living 20, 30 years ago, pretty mundane. You know, get up, go to work, pay the mortgage, spend the weekends with your family and your kids, and just usual it's uh as we say in norway pleasantly boring everything is just fine and that's probably what causes the problems it's funny i want to take a little side note i i read i'm reading a book by jeff sutherland about the agile you know about how to implement agile and scrum and one thing he uh one line he had in there was from thomas jefferson about uh the pursuit of happiness people are happiest when they're pursuing something. So if they've already gotten something and life has gotten to a steady state, you're not gonna be so happy as uh, you are when you're actually pursuing it. And he'd talk to people who'd climbed Everest or done some big achievements, and they said they were happiest when they're actually pursuing, you know, pursuing the goal. Like when they got to the summit of Everest, it was, uh, it was almost like a letdown. You know, it was uh, very, uh, melodramatic or what is that uh yeah I, I can't remember that word uh you know um so anti-climatic type of thing but it was the adventure up and the adventure down and being in the camp and preparing that was enjoyable you know <laughs> and, uh, so yeah that's i guess why i'm here in ukraine because there's a lot of things to pursue here every day you're still trying to <laughs> just keep things going you know and when i was in norway everything everything got into a steady state very quickly when i was living in america things were in a steady state i was just working too many hours there didn't have time for my fitness which is to me the most important thing i do every day you know as uh for myself is uh staying fit five out of seven days a week you know doing two hours of activity you know broken up over three times a day so it's uh yeah that's uh keeps you keeps you happy and but uh yeah so yeah back to this what ukraine ukraine would uh yeah if ukraine got thrown under the bus so yeah there would be loss of territory uh, have an economic disaster here you know the grievna now is uh 30 30 uh seven to a dollar 36 depending on where you buy if you buy from a bank or you buy it on the street you know there's like slightly different prices that would all go to like 100 120 i don't know maybe the european union would step in with some emergency aid packages but it would, all that money would be corrupted the corruption would come right back people would feel let down i mean it would be like a real real letdown and like i say the crime the crime would be the biggest thing to worry about especially in western ukraine versus the russians just moving in they they've learned their lesson in afghanistan in georgia that there's always so far they can go you know so they're not going to go too far from their lines you know so they can but uh it'll be so bad that maybe over time people would elect a, a russian leaning government and we would be right back where we were back in the uh, 2000s you know with this uh, yanukovych you know um guy and kuchma and all these kind of you know thugs you know uh you know in the country running the place 
and it would just you know maybe maybe uh, hypothetically I was discussing if some Russian leaning government were to take over you know if Trump really threw us under the bus and even started backing Putin you know which uh, I wouldn't rule out you know he's uh, he admires Orban and he admires Putin like I said I agree with a lot of what Trump does except his view on Russia you know and his view on globalism globalism is the necessary evil to counter China Russia even India you know in 100 years India is going to be a superpower if you map out their trajectory they managed to put a a, 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 a lander on the moon you know and uh, they managed to launch a nuclear sub man it, granted it sank they left the hatch open but if you map this out over a hundred years and if they keep this up and they're already manufacturing airplanes have nuclear weapons they they could be a they could be a player in the superpower game you know US Europe all the civilized nations Australia New Zealand they need to you know there's democracy rule of law you know women have rights all this kind of thing need to pull together you know uh, US needs to bring Mexico up you know South America we got to get them on side and act as a as an opposing force I mean it's libertarians are dead wrong that oh if we leave them alone they'll leave us alone that ain't happening so yeah if he really throws us under the bus it then what would happen the Lviv region would probably reject would reject a uh, Russian leaning government and maybe agree to join Poland or there'd be a treaty where parts of Ukraine would join Poland Hungary Romania and you know Ukraine would just be you know parts of Ukraine would be like regions within these countries you know so there's a lot on the line here this is probably they say every election is the most important election ever I would say the only election that was ever more important than this one was the 2000 election between Gore and Bush if Gore had won we wouldn't have made that mess in Iraq we would have just kept Saddam in his box you know and uh, left it alone you know and just kept a containment policy and you know Iran and Iraq would have canceled each other out they, they hate each other you know Shias and Sunnis but uh, yeah we we opened up that can of worms and got into this uh, that, that was a wrong war you know the endless war thing they should have taken that energy and that money and spent it on uh, rebuilding nuclear power infrastructure in America and gotten our energy from somewhere else than thinking to rip it off of Iraq <laughs> and that they would uh, even after defeat taking their capital that they would suddenly all just you know uh, surrender and act like Americans or something you know boy we uh, got a lesson there uh, I was on reddit commenting about that you know if Gore had won that election you know we would have been we would have been in a good situation and he would have handled 9-11 I mean 9-11 would have you know it wasn't like Bush uh, handled it all by himself he had advisors and everything and Gore would have benefited from the same from the military and probably we would have caught uh, bin Laden and Tora Bora I mean you have to remember Bill Clinton was uh, gunning for bin Laden he almost got him with cru cruise missile attack two years before so it wasn't like uh, the Democrats were supporting Al Qaeda and the Republicans were gonna save us there's there's a military machinery it doesn't matter who's in power that's always uh, that's always moving and turning you know um, maybe some decisions like I say you know instead of using you know how bin Laden got away they used Afghan mercenaries to seal the border with uh, Pakistan and, uh, and I think if the Democrats were there and listened to the military advisors they would have used uh, 82nd Airborne or 10th Mountain Division and there would have been Americans who wouldn't have taken bribes and he would have been pressed out of Tora Bora and then he would have been rounded up shortly after that was the key battle that ended up leading to bin Laden's escape you know the mismanagement you know of sealing that border is what uh, caused him to take 10 years 11 years later to get him you know so yeah anyway yeah enough on that sidetrack so yeah it's uh yeah that's what we're worried about here in Ukraine you know it's uh, a lot to think about you know it keeps the mind busy and that's for sure I was like picturing my life in America that if uh, 
I was living there, I, I didn't have to think about all this stuff. When I was over there, my mind was like clear, but I was more worried about the food I was eating. The food I was eating was really uh, messing up my stomach. You know, I had to eat at home all the time with my mom. You know, I couldn't enjoy those restaurants. It was like really, uh, yeah, it was really takes a, you really take a hit on your health every time you go out to eat there. You know, they just uh, jack the food up with so much uh, chemicals and unnecessary stuff. And if you've been living here in Ukraine and eating my wife's cooking, you know, you can feel those uh, artificial things real quick. But anyway, take care, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.